So, we were talking about auditory, or someone had mentioned this before. Again, this is a perceivable situation. So, four of them had perceivable, one of which had all principles. The other three perceivable only. And what it is, can't hear. We talked about that earlier about having a transcript to that audio file. And specifically, this is the culture that really does not see themselves and has moved the rest of this the culture of disabilities away from disability and ability. We have a differing ability. Because individuals in this culture do not consider themselves as disabled. In fact, they take quite the offense. We don't want for disability etiquette to call a person disabled. They just have a different means of interacting with their environment. And so, in dealing with this process, there's some obvious examples. We talked about transcripts. We talked about, well, rarely captioning. What I want to basically show you here, here's a couple of different degrees of hearing loss and the types of things that will come to this. Now, all these resources are here for you to come back to, so please do so and peruse them on your time. Um, what I really find fascinating in dealing with hearing loss is that it affects everybody. Literally, whether it's an impact because of some trauma or just getting older. And what I found really fascinating is high tone and low tone hearing loss. High tone hearing loss is the loss of hearing high tones. What's really interesting is women's voices are harder to hear. Now guess who, high tone hearing loss, who that impacts the most? Men. Go figure that. So, it's not just selective hearing. As you're getting older, or if you want it to be selective hearing, you could try to use this as an excuse. But the point being is, yeah, <laughs> you have access to this course this afternoon. You just bring them to it and then, then peruse this together. Now, this is really fascinating that actually this happens to men while the reverse happens to women. Low tone hearing loss. The inability to hear lower tones, male voices. So, I, you know, I don't know exactly what's going on with nature to where as we get older we can't hear each other as well. Um, it's really interesting how that happens. So, you know, if you have a male-female partnership and you've been married, for instance, for 50 years, it could be that, and this is what someone had said in an earlier training, well, that makes sure that we can just stay together. <laughs> I don't know, but this is just an uplifting moment because I don't want to be all serious about everything. But I, I'm serious. I was like, okay, this is a really weird thing. But the point with hearing loss is we all have to deal with a certain amount of hearing loss over time. I mean, some of us, we, we have, you know, basically inflicted it upon ourselves. I was a musician um, all my life, still am. And at some point, you know, I had the opportunity to do lots of live events, and I played with a drummer that happened to play really loud. And I stood on a portion of the stage where he was hitting a cymbal, and my right ear now has hardly any 4K mid-range, which is very important to be able to hear anything, especially voices. So along the way, hearing loss actually does affect a large portion of our population, not just persons with disabilities. Now, let me ask you this. How many of you use captioning? You haven't? One, nobody else, two, really? You haven't run across like a movie and you couldn't understand what was happening and you just needed to know and well, that's just who I am. It doesn't work on the new TV where the cable box. What? The cable box people say it's the TV's fault, the TV people say it's the cable box. Oi. <laughs> okay, well both, the, yeah, you need to get in contact with both of them and say, hey, you gotta resolve this. I mean, that's an FCC requirement. Yeah, you need that. 
Well, yeah, exactly. So there's different accents, there's different reasons. There could be situations where it's called situational disabilities, situational impairments, i.e. I'm in a library, I need to use the captioning for this particular video so I don't make a bunch of noise around other people because I don't have any headphones. I mean, there's all sorts of reasons why captioning can benefit everybody. It's very much like that automatic door situation. So it's not just for persons who are deaf. It's literally all of us can benefit from it. English is second language learners, individuals to new subjects, so they can actually see, they hear the word, but then they can see it's spelt correctly. Thus, accuracy is so important in the process. So that's an example, and you guys have a really good system here. So that's, that's a good thing, too. There's a plug for you, David. Um, now, in dealing with deaf blindness, how do you think this individual would get access to our environment? Any idea? We know what they would do traditionally would be Braille, right? Well, it's very often still using Braille. Does that mean they have to carry around a book? A Braille? Anybody seen like a Braille book? Absolutely ridiculously huge, you know, several volumes for one book. No. See this right here? This is a refreshable Braille display. It's an electronic device. It's an assistive technology that this group, as long as we design to the standards we have identified, they can get access to that material through this device. They'll be able to take that electronic file or web or wherever they're interfacing with and use Braille interactively with that environment and not have to carry around tomes of literal print materials. In fact, it's so liberating that they now have made a Bluetooth version of a refreshable Braille display. Bluetooth, device about this big. Literally, you hook it up Bluetooth with whatever you're using it with. And then as long as we've designed a standard, they can go ahead and get access to that information. Now, what do you think the two most used devices are for deafblind or blind individuals? Two most used devices. Anybody? Any hazard guessing? I hope I'm not walking around too much, David. I have a tendency to do that. Okay. Yes, yes, this is one of them. Not necessarily an Android. Not quite up to par as iPhones yet. Can you guess what the other is? It's either a computerized version of this or most likely it's a PC. And the reason why is PCs are adapted the best to dealing with the assistive technologies that are designed for that environment. So an individual here would be using those two tools. Now, do you think that creating a PDF that is accessible and then we load it up into our web environment is going to render well and scale well on this device? No. But if we follow standard, including using the correct type, using the, the correct type of material, or in other words, we're going to use the correct authoring tool for the type of delivery, in other words, HTML for online materials, then you're going to create scalability so that way you can use them both on this device, on a tablet, and also on a desktop. So all of us can get access to it much easier than trying to trap things into a file type that's meant to be delivered to a different delivery system. It makes all the difference for this group to get access to that material. 